Hello everyone, Elijah here, back with another video. You've probably seen heaps of videos about escaping the mid-game, but no matter what, it always feels like you're stuck there, right? Well, what if I told you the so-called mid-game is a lie, and I'll show you how to truly escape it, and why it feels like it never ends. Before we start, I just want to say the support of the last video was amazing, and I really appreciate it. I'd love to keep making more videos for you guys to help inform you and help you reach the next level of your journey. So if there's something in this video that helps you, please give the video a like, consider leaving a comment or subscribing. It helps so much, more than you know. With that, let's move on to the meat of the video. What I next show you, there are two critical things that are important about it that I want you to try and guess. So you probably see the early, mid, and late game as something like this. Did you notice anything about those clips? Firstly, the wealth gap is massive, with the early setup costing about 150k, the mid game setup costing about 70 mil, and the late game setup costing 1.5 bill a 2,100% increase from the mid-game setup. Secondly, many of you might not have agreed with the image of the mid-game. To some of you, the mid-game might look like this, or this, or even this. Or unfortunately this. You, you don't want this. This is a trap. It leaves you feeling like the mid-game should be something you can progress through in a reasonable amount of time. Early, mid, late, three sections should all take similar amounts of time, right? But as we've seen, this couldn't be more incorrect. This is due to a social perception that the mid game is some universally agreed upon thing, but the wealth gap between the mid and the late game is astronomical, which would understandably explain why you might feel like you're not making progress and you're always trapped in the mid game. But that's because the goal is 1.5 bill and you don't even know where you are or what you're aiming for. 1.5 bill is like the Mount Everest of goals and you're moving towards it without even knowing where you're starting at. In my estimation, from my experience playing the game, there isn't three main sections of the game, there are seven. Seven tiers, seven big breakpoints at each of these tiers that will vastly change your gameplay experience. And I will show you how to move from each one to the next to truly progress and grow your account. This is your account when you first create it. You're fresh off Tutorial Island and haven't got an idea where you're going or what you're going to do yet. You'll start off by getting membership. And next, I know it's not what you want to hear, but if you can afford it, buy a bond. With bonds almost at 10 mil, buying a single bond with real money is seriously going to propel your account's progress. You can buy lots of teleports, useful items like stamina potions, some starter gear and items, like a staff and some runes for the early quest bosses. If you've got some extra cash from a bond or another main account, I can highly recommend getting 70 prayer as one of the first things you do on your account. Your combat level will be so low you can barely be attacked by PKs, and you can do single inventories lightning fast with 10 HP, you can die super quickly to the Chaos Fanatic to reset in Lembridge. The base of the early account will mostly be quests. Here's a new account I started playing on the side a week or two ago, and all the stats by the range, prayer, magic, and a little bit of construction are purely from questing and XP lands, and that construction took less than an hour. Your main stat goal is going to be base 40s, 70 prayer if you can afford it to do it at level 3, and the main quests you're going to be doing are the big starter quests, Waterfall, Dorix, Night Sword, etc. As for gear, you're going to pick up basic rune armor, rune scimitar, a magic staff for casting fire strike or better, Right now there's no PVM goals, and your bank total goal is going to be to work towards 10 mil. Once you complete all of these goals and build up your bank, your account will have progressed to Tier 2, Adventurer. This is where your account will truly come into its own. You probably start your Slayer journey, push your combat stats up to plus 75, move towards getting your first Fire Cape and Barrow's Gloves, you potentially dip your toes into your first PVM experience, your main stat goals are going to be base 75s in combat. Your quest goals are going to be underground pass, legends quests, and RFD, as well as dream mentor to unlock lunas. 
your main item goals, and this is a hefty list. Fighter Torso, Fire Cape, your Barrow's Gloves, Abyssal Whip, Dragon Defender, Barrow's Armor, Berserker Ring, and this next one's the biggest one, the Blowpipe. The amazing part about the Adventurer tier is how many powerful upgrades you can get for your account, and how inexpensive they are. There is a reason why almost half the items listed here are still used in other max gear setups at end game content. As for your PVM goals, you could try Giant Mole or just stick to Slayer and focus on monsters like Brutal Black Dragons, Gargoyles, or if you feel like doing a different boss, Barrows. Your bank goal is a bit of a hefty one. It's 100 mil. It's going to take a while to get there, but as long as you enjoy the process, there's lots of upgrades for you to earn along the way. Hope you get that Tasset drop. Once you've achieved all these goals, your account will move into Tier 3, Hero. This is where your account will really start to be propelled into more PVM, and the options completely open up. You'll want to build up your bank from Slayer Scaling and other PVM activities for quite a while here. It's important to pace yourself. It's not a race. Don't try to burn out keeping up with other people. Remember, comparison is the thief of joy. You'll be starting to look to push up your stats to 85s or 90s ideally. Every max hit counts. You'll also be completing strong endgame quests with powerful rewards. Things like Dragon Slayer 2, Unlocking Ferocious Gloves, Forkarth and Rune Dragons, Monkey Madness 2, Unlocking Demonic Gorillas for Black Demon tasks, and Desert Treasure 2 for unlocking the new bosses there. You'll also be looking to pick up some of the cheaper but very powerful PVM items that we skipped over in the last tier. I know I said it under Adventurer, but the Blowpipe, I'm putting it here again. It's such an insane weapon. Maybe consider putting Amethyst or Dragon Darts in it if you've got some money to spare, but this weapon is insanely powerful, even after the nerfs. There's a reason why it's still used at best in slot PVM content like Inferno, COX, Tob, and Toa. You will also 100% want to get the Osmontan's Fang. This item is so powerful. It can be used at almost any boss, God Wars, Toa, Duke, Vorkath. It's only about 5 or 6% worse than the Dragon Hunter Lance at Vorkath, and you can just keep the one item in your bank instead of having to afford two. It's crazy powerful. You also want to try to pick up all the pieces of Xenite jewelry. These items pound per pound are some of the best upgrades for each attack style. For magic, you can look at getting an item like Toxic Trident of the Swamp. Don't waste gold on items like Mando's Chestplate and Tassets, Prims, or Armadil yet. These are not worth your gold. What you do want to absolutely get is Rigor and Augury. Crazy good upgrades. You can look at moving into some of the more profitable bosses, Zora, Warcath, God Wars Trips as a solo, or with a proper team, wilderness bosses like Ardio, Calvarian, and Spindle. You also open up some really strong non-boss profitable PVM, such as Rune Dragons if you feel like AFKing on the side. The next bank goal is a bit of a hefty one. There's no easy way of saying this, so it's 500 mil. It's a big goal, it's gonna take a while. You'll of course upgrade on the way, but there's not much of a gameplay difference between here and there. Legend. Okay, you're officially a bit of a gamer here. Now you've got the bank to start moving towards maxing some skills, maxing out your POH, working on getting plus 99s in your combats, finishing off the rest of the Grandmaster quests I listed before. As for your gear, you definitely want to get a Bofa and full crystal. You can start expanding your weapon collection, potentially looking at picking up a face guard if you prefer non-slayer content like raids or off-task God Wars trips. This is also a good chance to expand your spec weapon collection, looking at picking up the light bearer. You 100% want a BGS. You could consider the Dragon Warhammer, Claws, or even a Void Waker if you really want to splash out. You can now do all the PVM content in the game. Nothing is off limits anymore. You have enough gear to consider trying the Inferno, though don't feel rushed. To give it a go if you want to wait until your twisted bow instead. Your gear and stats from this point is actually incredibly solid. There's not much more you can really progress in terms of item upgrades here. You can maybe start picking up some bits and pieces that you are missing, things like full bandos, the sang staff, maybe even Virtus. For PPM you could move into some higher tier content like COX, TOA experts, TOB, maybe some higher tier slayer bosses that you haven't unlocked yet, Thermi or Cerberus rest of the Desert Treasure 2 bosses, and maybe Musper. The next bank goal, while hefty, is actually probably easier than the last tier. It's 1 billion gold. That seems like a lot, 
but you have the gear to do some of the best money makers in the game now. So this 500 mil is going to tumble a lot faster than the last 500 mil. Veteran. Okay, you've been playing for a while now. You've built up a hefty bank, you've got some pretty good stats, the world is your oyster here. You've got the gear to have near best in slot for any content in the game, and the stats to back it up. From here, it's slow and steady move to the finish line. For your main stats, you want to be moving from 95 to 99 in all combats, as well as probably working towards 99s and other stats if you want the skill cape perks, for things like the construction and crafting capes. For your quest goals, you should be finished with quests. If not, you can round out your quest cape here, otherwise be working towards some important elite achievement diaries that are quite useful, like Lumbridge and Fremnik. As for PVM goals, like I said, the world's your oyster. Any PVM, any Slayer task you feel like you want to do to steadily build your bank, except Sire, all my homies hate Sire, God Wars, Nex, Raids, you're close to cracking the Tebow barrier, but just keep in mind that until you have quite a few other pieces to go along with it, the Bofer is actually still better in terms of DPS. As for your item goals, finishing out the rest of your gear upgrades. Grabbing Primordials, Virtus or Ancestral, finishing more or all of the spec weapons from before, and for your final bank goal, now it's time to really climb that mountain. You're going to be in Veteran for a while, so you better find content you like and really settle in. Because the next goal is to Bill. Well, damn. You, you actually did it. You finally got your Mega Weapon. You've got max stats. You maybe even maxed your account. Look back at where you started and appreciate where you've come from. If you were silly like me, you probably also burnt yourself out a decent amount on the way here. So maybe don't do that going forward, yeah? As for your main stat goals, you probably have max combat. If not, you can round that out here, potentially maxing your account if that's something that interests you. As for your quest goals, finishing off the elite achievement diaries. PVM goals. While it actually seems like the world should be your oyster here, because you're locking yourself into a mega weapon rebuild, you're actually locking yourself into less content. Because you want to do content where that item is incredibly powerful until you expand your bank a bit more. This is where you have more than enough gear and items to complete your infernal cape and some comfort. You can move on to harder PVM, 400, 500 expert raids, TOA, TOB, COX solos, hard modes. Of course, this doesn't mean other content is off limits. If you want to go grind the mole pet instead of inferno, go for it. The fun is what you make of it. Nothing matters at this point anyway. As for your item goals, building out the rest of the set to support your mag weapon. If you bought a Tebow, full Missouri, Zarite fan braces, and everything like that, if you bought the Shadow, full Ancestral, Magus Ring, everything to go with that. You also want to be rebuilding the other pieces of gear you sold off to get here. For example, if you got the Tebow, you could look at getting your Virtus or Ancestral back, pick up Bandos, maybe even look towards buying Torva, getting a Scythe. You could also aim to go for the combat achievements and maybe unlock one of the Slayer Helms. Other than that, you've done it. You, you reached the top of the mountain. It's complete. You're a PVM god, and you goddamn earned it. But Elijah, I hear you saying, wasn't that seven categories? Aren't you forgetting one? Yeah, I mean it. You're probably maxed. You probably have an infernal cape. Probably also time for you to switch over to a Zuck helmet a profile pick, put your pet count in the bio, and start talking down to players who have in a single less PVM hour than you. But in all seriousness, the game finished a while ago. If you're still here, you don't need a section in this video to tell you what to do or how to play. You like it. You've been doing it for a while. So get out there, Scaper, and get after it. There we go. Why I think the mid game is a lie. Bunching tiers 2 through 6 as mid game encompasses so much of what the runescape grind actually is. If you feel like you're stuck in the eternal mid game, don't worry about it. You're having way more fun progressing your own path at your own pace. Trust me. I think part of the reason for a lot of this confusion is about where the mid game ends and the end game begins. It's different for different people at different points. Some people might say that your end game when you have an infernal cape, some would say it's after you maxed, some might say it's when you can start doing your first raids. 
all these views are equally valid, and I think this thread on the OSR subreddit explains just how confused people are feeling about this sort of thing. I've tried to break down the game into more bite-sized chunks, where your gameplay experience drastically changes with each tier seemed to be like a fair divide to me. But hey, I'm not the arbiter of everything. You might see it differently, and that's okay too. I hope you took away something from this video that helped you, and if it did, please consider subscribing. I'm going to be putting out a video every week, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching.